All right. Well, welcome back. We're here for another lift. We're with uh, Coach John Ranieri. Uh, we're going to do a core progression exercise. This is kind of based off of the video with Coach Michael Crouch. Uh, so we're going to go into four exercises. We're going to do that for a series of two. And then we're going to go into four to five exercises that are a little bit more total body based. And then we're going to do that for a series of three. And then we're going to finish with the opening core exercises more or less as a cool down. Uh, but inside of this, this is a progression, and if you need to regress, you can always go back to some of the previous exercises. Instead of a push-up, you can go plank up-down. Instead of a plank up-down, you can do plank with toe taps or reaches. Uh, but today, we're going to start off the workout with a push-up. We're going to go slow. We're going to shoot for 15 repetitions. Uh, so, John, go ahead and get into your push-up position. Hands a little bit wider than you would normally go. The, normally, uh, you want your hands naturally to be inside your shoulders. We want them a little bit wider than your shoulders. Go slower, slower position. Controlled motion, all right? Even slower on the way up, slower. I want you to take your time. You don't need to go as deep as you think you need to. Smooth and slow. Number, where are we at? Five. All right. Seven, go slower. Up, eight, down, two, up, nine, down, two, up, ten, five more. Up, eleven, down, two, up, twelve. A little slower on the way up, John. A little bit slower. All right? Doesn't mean you're going to pause at the bottom or the top. Just means you're not going to push up as aggressively. Better. That's what I want to see. Good. Good. All right, on your back, single leg bridge. The other leg is in the air and bent. Both feet are bent. This is going to be on the roller. Other leg is bent and in the air. Foot extended in front of you. Palms are facing the ceiling. 15 repetitions. Go ahead. This leg is going to stay in the the air. Good. Go slower. Come all the way down with the small of your back. I want all the way down. Your tailbone touching the ground every time. Good. Smooth and slow. And we're going to keep this foot the same angle. With the quad the same angle. Good. Keep track of that number for me. Hips up a little higher. There we go. That's the extension I want. All right. I want that lower back to touch the ground every single time. I'm going to lower this just a little bit so we can see John a little bit more. And we're again, we're going to shoot for 15 repetitions, right? If we go, go for 10, it's going to be about 40 to 45 seconds. But 15 repetitions, we're going to shoot for about 60 seconds of movement. Number, where are we at? 11. All right. Smooth and controlled. Good. 15 repetitions. Okay, all right, switch legs. Foot's extended and time's on. Good, good adjustment. And again, John's tendency is to go quick in one motion, quick on the way up. But what I'm asking you to do is to pay a little bit more attention, to slow things down more consciously, and that there's no pausing in any one position. Good, smooth and control. Good. He's got a great position with his palms. His knuckles are on the ground. It means his uh, palms are up in the air and he's getting that extension out of his chest and he's getting some relaxation there. 15 repetitions. Where are we at, John? And all right, five more. Smooth and slow. And from here, we're going to go into a reverse fly on the ground, kneeling with an eight pound dumbbell, same concept. We're gonna go for 15 repetitions on both sides. Now, if you don't have an eight pound dumbbell, you can use a gallon of milk. If you don't have that, you can use a heavier soup can. Kneeling down, facing the wall for me. Opposite leg is gonna be extended straight back. Face the wall. A little cramp, that's all right, that's all right. It's the first time you've gone up to 15 repetitions. Opposite leg is back. You're not gonna let that foot twist. Go ahead, smooth and slow. 15 repetitions, no pausing and control. Everything about this for you today, John, is about control. Perfect, that's what we're looking for. 
There's a lot of different ways that we can challenge stability. John, do you feel really stable right now? Yes. Good. Now pick up the toe that's on the ground. Now do it. All of a sudden, we change one little aspect of this. And this exercise, with the same weight, became that much more of a challenge. All right. If you can get 15 reps here with just the knee and the palm on the ground, but not the toe, that's fantastic. But if you need the toe on the ground, totally fine. I kind of threw a wrench at him right there, but he handled it well. Not quite ready for that toe in the air. Go ahead and switch sides. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, as my wife says. Hobble them along, post-surgery, here we go. Smooth and slow, good. Again, we don't want to go behind the body, we want to go perpendicular. Good, and it's okay, if one, one side you can handle that toe in the air, that's fantastic. But if you can't, it's okay to have it on the ground. Nothing wrong with that either. And if, and if having that this leg behind you in the air is too much or causing you too much instability, keep both legs on the ground if you need to. Don't go behind your body, not across the belly. We want to go across the chest. Control that weight on the way up. Where are we at? 13. All right, two more. Good. Jackknife position balancing on the butt. Hands on our by your knees. Arms are straight, but your heels are in the air. Good. Hands are straight out. Good. And the palm's going to be down. Good. So now you're going to go down and then come up. Now, when you do this, go ahead and keep going. I'm going to explain that as you go. I want a little bit more motion out of your upper body. I want a little bit more of the small of your back into the middle of your back coming down to the ground. There we go. Trust yourself to come back down and rock back and forth. Now, if this is too much for you, you can reset by putting your heels on the ground in either position. Or, if that's still too much, you can put those hands on the ground behind you. But if John gets through this and this is too easy, then we're going to progress it and put his hands across the shoulders. And if that's still too easy, we'll go to the fingertips at the ears. I'm going to let John decide that as he's doing the session. All right, back into that push-up position. We're not going to take any rest, save for the time it takes to get into it. Control, don't rush. Smooth and slow. Good. No deeper than that. We don't need the shoulders to go any deeper than the elbows. We really don't. This isn't about showcasing your chest coming to the ground. Smooth and slow. Good. Keeping track of that number. Guys, if you did that first round with us, and that first round took you about seven minutes, right? So these first two rounds, it's going to be about 14 to 15 minutes. Smooth, slow, and controlled. Hips are up a little bit taller. Don't let them collapse. No pausing. Don't come down so fast and then catch yourself. Control that body weight. Good. Good. Hips are forward. Good adjustment. The weight became too much, but we still want to get the repetitions in. His shoulders and his hips are moving forward, but you can squeeze those glutes for me. Squeeze those glutes. There we go. So now those hips are nice and tight. Remember, where are we at? 13. All right. 14. And 15. Single leg bridge with a roller. Palms are facing the ceiling. Good. We're going to keep this a little bit closer to your butt. Just a little bit. Palms are facing the ceiling for me. Smooth and slow. And again, because the weight is a little bit closer to his butt, we, want, we still want that lower back to come all the way down to the ground. Good. Because that weight, uh, the, the roller is closer to his butt, it's uh, forcing his hips to need to come up a little bit higher. The further away, the, the less your hips are going to come up. Good. 15 repetitions is the name of the game here. Palms are facing the ceiling. Good. And if you've been doing this exercise, you started with that, that roller or that foot a little bit further away from you, and now you're getting a little bit of tightness through your knee because you have it a little bit too close for you to handle, it means you might have some quad tightness 
that we got to work on. You can get, you can actually use the roller to help with that. Um, but it might mean that for right now, you need to keep that foot a little bit further away. If this is causing too much tightness through your knee or through your quad. Go ahead and switch sides. Good. All of our videos are done here at home. Lowering that back all the way to the ground. Number, where are we at? 10. All right, five more. Sometimes I ask that question, where are we at? And I think they respond with just a random number. So next time they do that, I'm going to say, oh, you can start at three, even if they only have one more left. Just a mess with them. A lot of large sums. <laughs> <laughs> Number? 15. Done. All right, good. Let's go right into that reverse fly. Using that eight pound dumbbell. Move this over just a little bit so you closer to the wall. Let's have your outside arm towards the camera. There we go. Pops right. the leg out. Good. Smooth and slow. Control that leg. Go slower. Good. Good position. Good. Try not to let that wrist go up so the knuckles match the forearm. There we go. We want to have a good lock position, right? We don't want to have the wrist breaking, right? We want this to be a stable position. And locked. Good. Control that weight on the way up. Number, where are we at? 12. 12. We got three more. Guys, again, in this series, we're going to go for 15 repetitions. In this opening series, if you can do 15, that means the weight is manageable, it's stable. Go ahead and switch sides. All right. If you can only manage 8 to 10 to open up your workout, that might mean it, it doesn't mean it might mean it does mean that the weight is just too heavy or the exercise is too progressed. Good. No major pauses. Good wrist position. Good. Smooth and slow. We got that back toe in the air. That's a major progression for so many people. So if you can't handle that back toe in the air, go ahead and keep that toe on the ground. Watch that tempo. Watch that tempo. Two seconds per motion. All right? We don't want to jump up and pause. We want to smooth and slow. We want to demonstrate control of the weight in every aspect. Good. Jackknife crunch. I have no idea why we call this jackknife. I'm not even sure if that's what it's called. It's just what I call it. It doesn't really matter. It's like calling something the Romanian de deadlift. They didn't come up with the exercise. I promise you that. Cavemen were doing deadlifts long before we were. Good adjustment. So the arms were here, but that weight was too easy. So he changed where the weight was. And it's like being on, on a seesaw. If the weight is in the middle of that seesaw, right? It's not going to go anywhere, right? It's not, it's, it's balanced. But if all that weight is on one side, it becomes that much heavier. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're just trying to misplace or change uh, where the placement of that weight is so it becomes appropriate. The heaviest we've gone thus far is only eight pounds. Smooth and slow. Good. Number, where are we at? 14. All right. Good. All right. So while we're on a little bit of recovery, a little bit of rest, uh, we're going to go right into the next exercise. You're not going anywhere. Uh, next series we're going to do is a reverse lunge. We, I know, right? We were with, uh, we were with Michael. We did a reverse lunge here and, and uh, did a single leg squat. So now we're going to start here. The toe is going to be on the ground. And we're going to come backward and land blind and then come up. Land blind and then come up. Each time the toe is going to touch the ground. John's going to hold the eight pound dumbbells eight pound at his shoulders. We're just going to start there. We don't need to go too heavy, right? So you're going to start up tall, right? 
You're going to land blind. The toe is going to come behind you. Come down. And then come back up. Toe touches the ground. Good. We're going to go for 12 reps. Weights are going to stay in front of the shoulders, not on top of the shoulders. There's three. Good. Four. Five. The landing blind is a challenge. So if this is too much for you, certainly you can go forward. Number. Ten. All right. Five more. We're going to go 12 reps. And then switch legs. Good. John is doing a great job of keeping that weight in the front heel. You can lean forward a little bit more on the way down with his shoulders, so the shoulders go slightly towards the knees, just a little bit more. So we keep that weight off of the back, and we put it a little bit more in the quad and into the glutes. There we go. When you stand up, you stand up all the way, getting that full extension. Another? None. All right. Good. All right, so now I'm going to do a deadlift. Uh, so some of you might have a kettlebell at home. If you don't, it's all right. If you don't have a kettlebell at home, you can certainly use two dumbbells at your side. But the principles remain the same. So John, I'm going to have you face the wall and put your feet straddling over the top of the kettlebell, as we have done many times before. Up tall first, before you start standing all the way up tall. This is a position we want to end in, okay? So John's going to bend down, he's going to pick up, or he's going to get his fingertips on that. You're going to collect a little bit higher, all right? So the weight is through the heels a little bit more, but the back is still flat. He's going to stand up, squeeze in those glutes, and then bow down, good. Butt can stay a little bit higher, good. We want that hamstring to have a little bit of a stretch to it. There we go. Keeping the, the weight through the heels, chest comes low, butt stays high. All right, we're gonna do 12 reps. A little bit less of a squat, a little bit more of a bend for me, John. A little bit less of a squat, a little bit more. There we go, there we go, good. And when you come up, you come up into full extension. Good. Now again, you can do this with two dumbbells at your side. The key is to go as low as you can without causing pain in your back or in your hamstrings. My, I don't have that same range of motion, so my deadlift ends up right about here, because that's how tight I am. Right? I can get a little bit lower by, by squatting a little bit more, but I want to go just as low as I can handle to feel a little bit of a stretch through the hamstring. So now we're gonna go into something a little bit different, a chest fly. You'll need a ball or a bench. Eight pounders. Uh, we're gonna go with the 10 pound dumbbells. Okay. So John, I'm gonna have you sit on the ball. All right. We're gonna keep the weights at the shoulders before you start laying down. Weights are gonna be at the shoulders. You're gonna roll out. So your lower back is off, or lower butt is off the ball. Lower back is off the ball as well. Head is on the ground. Hips are up tall for me. Weights are up in the air. So in this position, the weight is not going to come across the belly. It's going to stay across the chest. You're going to come wide slowly and then back up slowly. Good. We don't want the weight to come all the way down. We don't need the weight to go below the shoulders. You can go a little bit quicker. There we go. You can come a little bit lower. You have a little bit more range of motion. There we go. Good. So we already did push-ups, all right? A pretty progressive exercise. So we want to attack the chest in a different way, all right? And we don't always want to attack the chest when we're pointing towards the ground. So we can get the chest, but we can get the hamstrings at the same time. And in this position, John can pull with his hamstrings and squeeze with his glutes. He can get two exercises done at the same time. We just want to find the weight that makes the most sense. So we have 10 pound dumbbells, and unfortunately, we don't have 15. So we have 10, we have 20, and we have 30 or 35. Uh, 
The next progression would be 15 pound dumbbells. But we can change the tempo of these 10. All right, John, we're going to go into a side plank now. And I'm going to have you hold this for eight long, slow breaths. Eight long, slow breaths. Good. Smooth and slow on your own time. And that's what I want you guys to do at home. Eight long, slow breath, uh, breaths. All right. Squeezing the cheeks, locking the legs, keeping everything engaged, just breathing through the stomach, using those muscles. You don't want to breathe quickly. You want this to take some time. And if you do eight long, slow, it should take you about 40 seconds or so, maybe up to 50 if you take about six seconds per breath. It's a long time to breathe. Once John is done on that side, he's just going to rotate over and flip over onto the other side. All right. Last exercise in this series. And then we're going to go back to the beginning, and we're going to add something to that lunge position. All right. We're going to try to challenge you in a different way by adding a little bit more complication, but getting a little bit more of the muscles involved. Good. John's doing a great job of keeping his hips away from the ground, but also his shin away from the ground. He's doing a fantastic job of, of position of his upper body, his shoulders on top of the shoulder, directly on top of the elbow. Taking your time, breathing slowly. Once you're done, John, go ahead and stand up. You're going to grab those 10 pound dumbbells, you're going to put them on your shoulders again, and you're going to face the wall by the guitars. Well, there's two walls, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to do that, that landing blind uh, lunge, but first we're going to do a bicep curl, all right? But what I don't want to see with a bicep curl is that the elbows come back and then they rotate. I want the elbow to stay just in front of the shoulder. So we're going to bicep curl. Once the weight is back, then we're going to step back into the lunge and toe. Bicep curl and then step back. All right, we're going to do 12 reps. All right, bicep curl first. Good, so it's isolated. And then back into the lunge. Good, back to the toe. Good. Not all the way with that foot. Keep it on the toe for me. There we go. Good. Good. You can lean forward a little bit more as you're going down landing blind. There we go. Good. Now some of you, and I'm going to ask John to do this, is when he stands back up, keep that foot in the air. So the only time that that back leg or that foot touches is when it reaches back down. I'm going to ask that John doesn't do the bicep curl until he's stable on that foot. Good. And notice how that bicep or that, not the bicep, the elbow is staying directly underneath, if not slightly in front of the shoulder, and it's not coming behind him. The weight goes away from the body. Number, John, where are we at? Nine. All right, we're only going to go to 10 this time because we're going to end up doing 24 or 26 bicep curls. We don't want to do that. So once you're done, we're going to switch legs, but keep going with the bicep curl. We only want to do up to 20 bicep curls. So go ahead and switch legs. And if you can do 20 bicep curls in this motion, no problem. Well then I tell you, it's time to pick up that weight. Trying to get a little bit, a little bit stronger, we can, or we can change the position of that bicep curl. If this is too light for you, but you don't have heavier weights, only go down as far as here. Keeping that weight in front of you changes everything about where, where you're positioning that weight. Good. 
then from here, once we're done with this exercise, we're going to go back to that deadlift. Again, you can use dumbbells at your side or at your front, bowing down, getting that stretch through here, and then coming up full extension through the glutes. We don't want to finish the weight here. Right? We want to finish the weight all the way up. Where are we at, John? Just finished eight. All right, two more. So a lot of people ask, are these exercises really that important for runners? And I would say absolutely. When we're running, we only get a little bit of that range of motion, right? So if this is all the range of motion that you're used to, then everything is invasive. But if you have full range of motion to be able to lift your knee, come all the way through here and drop those hips, well then running here isn't that invasive. Go ahead into that deadlift facing the wall so they can see your flat back. Oh, deadlift. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Up tall, up tall for me. There we go. Full position. Good. Good flat back. Pressing through the heels. Smooth and slow. No pausing in one position or the other. We're going to go for 15, or sorry, 12 to 15 repetitions. And again, if all you have is dumbbells, keep those dumbbells in front or just off to the side slightly. All right, in front or just off to the side. Good. Pressing through the heels, butt stays high, more of a bend than it is a squat. Good position, John. Weight's going straight up and down. Number, where are we at? Nine. All right. And then from here, yeah, we're going to go going to go into that chest fly. Is it 10 pounds too heavy or is that a good weight? Um, 10 pounds is a little light actually. All right. So let's imagine that you don't have any heavier weights. We do, but let's say you don't. What can we do to make the same weight feel heavier? All right. Number, where are we at? Anywhere from 13 to 15. All right, here we go. So, John, you're gonna grab one 10 pound dumbbell. Okay. Just one. You're going to roll out the same position as you were. Both hands are going to be up. Both hands up. Good. Roll out. Hips are up tall. Now you're going to take the hand that doesn't have any weight. You're going to put it on your hip. Feet are going to be a little bit wider than you think they should be to give you base. And we're going to go 12 reps in one hand versus going both hands at the same time. Now what we're going to find is that the further that weight gets away from you, the opposite hip is going to engage. More pressure to keep you balanced. Johnny, don't need to go as low. There we go. Smooth and slow. Weight's coming across that chest line. Good. We're going to go 12 to 15 reps here. If you can get to 15, fantastic. The opposite hand isn't just hanging. It's not chopped off. It's right against his hip. So it's hard to see. So when he switches hands, you'll be able to see that in a little different position. You feeling that in the opposite hip? Yes. Great. Number 12. All right, let's give me three more. Smooth and control. And switch. Other arm. Good. Notice that hip position, the hand position. Hips are staying level. You're squeezing the cheeks. You're pulling with the hamstrings. You're pressing those heels into the ground as hard as you can. Those are very important details. Those aren't just words. Squeezing the cheeks, pulling with the hamstrings, pressing those heels into the ground as hard as you can. Very simple instructions, but are you doing it? Are you squeezing the hamstrings as much as you can and pulling with the glutes or of pushing those feet against the ground, right? You can make this as hard and as invasive as you want, even though it's a very simple exercise. The more deliberate you are with every position, every engagement, the better you're going to be. Good. Side plank, side plank. Eight slow breaths. Good. 
hips are good. It's not over rotating from one side or under rotating, right? They're right on top of each other. John, is this too easy? Um, I mean, it's a challenge, but it's not too easy. All right, then it's a challenge. We're good. We're good. I think uh, the difficulty lies just uh, maybe timing your breath. Yeah. While you're trying to concentrate on this. Yeah. Breathing and counting. It's very difficult. So simple. Once you get eight breaths, go ahead and switch sides. You know, it's not really the breathing and counting, it's just more the breathing and trying to keep form. Gotcha. Yeah. Alright. Hips are up tall. So again, everything that we're doing in these video series, guys, these are all supplements that you're running. John's a 61 minute half marathoner. He's run a mile under 410. Uh, he, he, he's, he finished 15th in New York City with a 214. And we have some big plans for this season coming up. Uh, we're going to take a stab at, at running his lifetime best in the mile on the roads here in, in Flagstaff at 7,000 feet, which is a, a pretty difficult challenge in and of itself. Um, and when we have marathon focus in, in, in the fall, uh, but, this work right here is all in supplement to help with those goals. And it doesn't matter if you're a professional runner uh, or if you are brand new to the sport. Uh, we want to start with a baseline of, of fitness and then we want to progress from there. So we're going to go right back into that uh, the, the bland, uh, bland, the blind landing uh, lunge with the bicep curl. All right, weight check the shoulders. Weight check the shoulders. So this time, instead of doing the bicep curl up here, John, you're gonna land blind in your lunge position. Go ahead. Do the bicep curl here. Good. Now stand, and then back into it. So here, now we're holding that lunge position a little bit longer. We're gonna do ten. Lean forward a little bit more for those shoulders. For there we go. Getting the weight through the glutes, through the quads. And that is not static reception, guys. Those are John's ankles cracking. Good. By doing the bicep curl in the lunge position, well, you give yourself a chance to get a little bit more effort over time. But if this is too challenging for you, if you don't have the stability or the strength to hold that weight in that position, go back to what it is we did before where you're doing the bicep curl up top. Number down. Where are we at? That was nine. All right. And once you get to 10, go ahead and switch legs. Standing up, good. Uncurling and curling when you're in that lunge position. We can lean forward a little bit more. There we go. And leaning forward doesn't have to mean that you go any further back with that back leg. We just want to make sure that that angle allows for the pressure to be placed through the glutes and through the hamstrings and quads. But if you're up too high, if you're in a position that's back, you're putting a lot of pressure in your lower back. Lean forward so that this angle here matches your angle of your shin. Good. Finding this to be a bit more of a challenge, huh? Slightly. All right. Number. This is 10. All right. I'm going to go back 
into that deadlift using that heavy kettlebell. Tall in that good position. Good flat back. Perfect. Good. Good. Make sure you get full extension. I want those shoulders to be directly on top. There we go. It's just a few inches, but that does make a difference. We want to make sure we're engaging the hamstrings, the glutes, the back as much as we can. And the best way of doing that is to make sure you get that full range of motion, that full position. Otherwise, you're still engaging through the hips. All right, we want to wake up the back of the body. Number. That was eight. All right. If we can get 15 here, guys, that would be fantastic. He's doing a fantastic job of, man, I love that word apparently. He's doing a great job of keeping that back flat and pressing through his heels every single time. It's not rocking back and forth. It's not shifting. It's not losing, losing connection between his hips and his core. All right. Single arm chest fly with a 10 pound dumbbell. Get to the position first. Hips are up tall. Opposite hands are going to be at the hip. Once you're steady, and reverse fly. Good. Smooth and controlled. Notice how his knees, his hips, his shoulder are in a straight line. All right? He's not breaking at the hip. All right? He's engaging the glutes to keep the knee the hip and the shoulder in a straight line. So that's telling me that everything is turned on here. But how much it's turned on, that I can't see. And that's only determined by how much he's willing to squeeze, pull, and push into the ground. You can be in the position and still be resting. But if you're engaging those glutes, pulling with those hamstrings, pushing those feet into the ground, if you're giving the absolute best effort you can in this position, yeah, you're, you're getting a great workout. It doesn't matter if you only have eight pounds or 10 pounds. You're fighting to hold that position. And that is a much better workout than just pretending to be in the position. And we're going to finish this series with a side plank, side plank. Once John gets to 12, 15 reps on each side. Side plank, side plank. I'm going to say pick that ball over here. Side plank, side plank. And then, guys, this is the last exercise in this series. And then we're going to finish up with the total body exercises that we started with. The push-up, the single leg bridge, the single leg bridge, the reverse fly, the reverse fly, and the jackknife. But we're going to be here for eight slow breaths. So far, we're just about 38, 38 minutes and 15 seconds into this workout. All right. We're getting almost every aspect of your body involved. Uh, it's, it's showing that you don't need every piece of equipment in the world. Uh, you, you don't even need the ball. You can... Do the, the chest fly on the ground. Right? You can do it in a bridge position with your feet in the air. You can do it with your feet on the roller. But wait, there's more. It's like those rotisserie chicken commercials, infomercials on uh, QVC. The best bang for your buck out of food right there. Right? Eight slow breaths. Again, the idea behind this, the, the purpose, you don't want to under-rotate, 
and leave the hips open. You don't want to over rotate. You want to have one hip directly on top of the other. Do you want to have the shoulder on top of the shoulder on top of the elbow? Right? The only thing that should be touching the ground right now are the sides of the feet and the forearm. And then once you're done here, we're going to go right back into that push-up position, 2-2 two, two tempo, which means two seconds down, two seconds up. It's going to be a challenge because we just did a plank, and this is technically a moving plank, but it is a different plane of motion, so it shouldn't be too bad aside from being fatigued. So the idea here, don't go all the way down, John. You like to go all the way down. You and Hannah both like to go all the way through it. John, you don't need to. All right? Right there's good. Smooth and slow. No pausing on top. How about this? As soon as you feel my hands... You're going back down, but you're going up slower and down slower. Your hips are staying tall. Just push those hips in front of you a little bit more. Keep the knees where they are, but push those hips forward. Push those hips forward. There we go. There we go. That's the position. So the knees, the hips, and the shoulders became a straight line. Number, where are we at? Nine. All right. Give me five more. And notice how that transition from the full body weight push-up to the knee push-up was a quick transition. He was in this position, and then he went to this position very, very fast. You don't need to stop and shake it out. You just need to reduce the weight by going to the knees. Good. Single leg bridge. Quick transitions. Well, we've got a few exercises to go. Palms are going to face the ceiling. Opposite legs in the air. We're going to put this not directly under the heel, but on the arch of the foot. We'll give you a little bit more stability. Smooth and slow, same concept. No pausing. Good. Good. Control motion. Now, it might be hard to see with the black shorts, but what we're trying to do is get this knee, hip, and shoulder in a straight line. That's how it almost always come back, it comes back to that zeroed out position, to that standing up tall position. Getting full range of motion, but getting full extension of the body. If the opposite leg straight is becoming too much, you can go back to bending it to reduce the weight of that lever. Number 11. All right. Four more, guys. Good. Again, no pausing, and you're letting that lower back touch the ground every single time. And switch it out. Smooth and controlled. So in a previous video, I showed that this guitar here was made in Ireland, but this one right here, as you guys are doing your bridges, this one was made here in Flagstaff, out of wood, found in the Flagstaff forest. I will not be playing for you, because you guys are doing bridges. Number, where are we at? Eight. All right, seven more guys, smooth and slow. See how this takes some time, right? In the previous videos, we were doing a double leg motion. It only takes 45 to 60 seconds, but because we're separating it out, single leg, single leg, because we're going to 15 repetitions, the workout lasts quite a bit longer. Good. Reverse fly, opposite leg extended. Using the eight-pound dumbbell. Good. So two or three years ago when John and I, uh, not three years ago, I first saw John run in person in a workout and I noticed that his arms were doing all of the work. They're very long and heavy. The, the levers were very, very long. So what we worked on with his upper body and his running 
was we changed his levers from being very, very long to shortening them up because it's easier to move, right? But you still need power. You still need strength. You still need a lot of endurance to be able to do this motion quickly over a longer period of time. So these exercises right here, this is what helps with that. It helps build endurance, build strength, right? And we take this new strength and new stability and new level of power into running drills and ultimately into regular easy runs and, and speed workouts and long marathon sessions, and it all combines into one thing. Right? We don't necessarily want really long levers. We don't want to run here with our legs straight. We want to pull, right? But we still need to have that range of motion. We still need to have the arms be able to have that strength to move, right? And when we're running, we're not running in a straight line. Our arms crisscross, right? If I hold up my arm like this, you can see naturally what's happening with my shirt. My muscles aren't going up and down and forward and backward. They crisscross, right? So this is important to get this motion, right? Not just going up and down and forward and backward, but coming across the body. All right. The jackknife, this is the last exercise that we're going to do. So John, I'm going to have you, you, you did a really good job. I'm going to have you help keep your elbows up tall and change that way. If this becomes too much, revert back and regress back to your hands across. Wow. We're just about 45, 46 minutes into the workout. Number, where are we at? Eight. All right. Six more, guys. Control that weight. Breathing is important. Don't stop. You won't like it. All right, guys. We are done. John, great work today. Good job. Uh, so in that, guys, thank you so much. This is a uh, progression of exercise. Thank you for spending your time with us. Thanks, John, for coming out here and, no uh, and spending, Thanks, guys. spending his time with us in this session. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you found a way to regress or progress some of these exercises. We're going to bring more videos as soon as we're able. Uh, but for right now, thank you very much, and we hope you guys keep safe. Thanks.